Okay, we're back. And we were looking at this whole idea of men setting standards and then judging women according to them mm -hmm. and how that's unfair, obviously, of a man to do. And an example was emotional versus rational. Now, obviously, it's almost like, I mean, there's calculations. It's like a 60-40 thing. A man can sometimes be 60%, sometimes, not all times, more rational, you know, less emotional. Sometimes a woman is more emotional, less rational. So what? That's because of the roles they have to play. And, Melinda, we were talking about the example where, for example, if your child, uh, gets electrocuted and you've told her many times not to hold that plug and not to put her hand into you know try to put the thing in the plug and at that moment what a man would do honestly has he not been trained to become more like a woman to become more like a woman have the woman be the standard at that moment because yes male can be standard in certain things and a woman is the standard for human perfection in other things and that's how we even out mm -hmm. right men and women are not equal they're mutually superior Right, but that's not the way men want to portray it. But anyway, what a man would have unfortunately done had he not been trained would be instead of embracing the child, as you put it, the emotional intelligence, now's the time. She's terrified. Yeah. She's not time to scold her. He'd, he'd think that the right thing to do now for it to never happen again <laughs> would be to tell the child. To, uh, and he and would traumatize her. Yeah. Subhanallah. He's absolutely. And it would, absolutely. And then also thinking that he was doing the right thing. Now who's smarter? Hmm. Who is smarter with Ooh. that child? The woman is smarter. So even the field that the man thought he was smarter in, i.e. rationale, turns out against him. It goes completely the opposite. He's actually less smart at that moment. That's just one example of, yeah. of that standard it's thing. It's the concept that not everything that's logical is always correct, because if you think about it, no man in his right logical mind would go through childbirth and nine months of pregnancy, right? Well, men would die medically. I mean, oh, the way yeah. our bodies are designed, if, you, if a man a man's gave can't birth, stand it. he'd die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's another example. That's a physical superiority. So mm -hmm. we can't even brag about this, well, we're more physically superior. But we are most of the time, you know what I mean? But even that, you're not, well, you're not entirely physically superior. Mm -hmm. You die, you die we, if you And we birth. can withstand pain better. I, well, again, an example. Not, I mean, not just childbirth, but in general. Yeah, yep. Women Absolutely. can withstand pain better than men. Absolutely. And Dara's comment, I just want to comment on that. I want to comment on your comment. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, basically, it's, I don't think the phrase would be everything, again, although I understand the point you're making, that not everything logical is always correct, because then you have a lot of rationalists watching, and they're thinking, oh, they're saying that it's not about being logical. I think everything logical is always correct, mm -hmm. but not everything rational is always correct, meaning that there are certain times where you have to have a supra-rational intelligence. You don't have to rationalize it. If I punch a friend of mine, we're joking, playing, I punch him in the stomach and it really hurts. I'm not going to sit there and say, look, based on physics, the strength of my punch, you know, and, and, and the distance of your stomach from my, you know, from my fist should not have created that pain. That is correct, mm -hmm. mathematically. But in the heart of the emotional pain and the physical pain, in, 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 from that perspective, it's actually not correct to think about math now. Right. You shouldn't even think about math. So, you know what I mean? There's, a human being is rational and should be at times. And a human being is also supra-rational, where there are things we intuitively know. You know you've hurt someone, you don't need to calculate how, how strong your punch was to know it. And so sometimes men think they're more superior when they're more inferior because of this whole rational thing, I think. But um, what else? What else is, you know, an example, if you want to go down that line, uh, of the standard of males expecting females to live up to their the standard or any form of other, any other form of oppression, anything else that we'd like to bring up today? I mean, you know, mm. anything at all? Well, the feminists out there might kill me, but um, for one example, my husband could never cook like I could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the other hand, I can't run a business like he can. Do you think so? Obje personally, objectively, you think he, he can physically run, you know, actually run a business better? I know for a fact that he can. What is it that he can do that you can't? To look a little bit at the other side of things in a business. Personally, we're talking about Melinda here. Um, it's case by case, and we're looking at it. He just has this talent that I don't have um, about running a business and bringing in people. And, and mashallah, he, he does it very well. So you feel because, look, the way it is, and the feminists won't kill you or anything because <laughs> we're on TV and they can't do it if they want it. But the point is that before I go on, and I want to elaborate on that, maybe, Dara, I think you always know how to kind of tackle this area because it's, it's, it's trying to strike a balance here, right? I do understand and I sympathize with the how and why Melinda just said they might kill me. It's, that this, it's this cliche stereotype of women cook. Right? Yeah. But let's look at it for a minute before I tell you what I think about that from another perspective. But isn't it true, though? Aren't a lot of women, not all women, but aren't a lot of women better cooks and better at cooking than a lot of men? That's very and true. And by the way, my husband does cook. 
Right. I just no, exactly. That's why it's he, better. He cooks. Yeah. Um, but you just cook better. <laughs> but I just cook better. And, and you know, he prefers my food to his food. Now, have you ever, let me ask you a question. And that's very interesting that he does, actually, because I do too. <laughs> I prefer my wife's food to my food. But if I can even make food, and if we can even call that food. <laughs> but I do have a question, though. There's, and I'm going to back this up with biology. So this mm -hmm. is not a Muslim thing, i.e. we're trying to. This is pure biology now, for those who simply okay. want to be convinced from that angle. It's very interesting that there's a part in the human brain that's wired. You can't affect it at all. Dara, Melinda, we can't do anything about it. It's within us. That if you have it, you, in other words, some brains are wired to get bored from repetitive tasks. Mm -hmm. So doing something more than once or twice, you'll get an immediate repulsion from it. And predominantly, that's the male brain, whether or not we like it. And predominantly, the female brain is wired to have no problem at all with repetitive tasks. And some people might say, well, that's why women have no problem cleaning the household if they want to. It's very interesting. And it is. It, it, that is scientific evidence towards that. I'm not saying women should clean the household. That is scientific evidence towards that nonetheless. But let's but clarify that women don't always like cleaning the house. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But if they, were asked, if, they, if they wanted to do it, they would be able to much more. The mm -hmm. idea of not just cleaning, cleaning is a right. silly example, cooking even, the same thing, going over, changing yeah. diapers. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's a repetitive task. But you don't, a woman doesn't feel like she's enslaved because she does it. She loves the child. So she's wired to love what she loves to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you'd, you'd change the diapers even if you didn't have that wiring yeah. because you love the baby. So Allah's generous enough to even wire you most, again, for the most part, not all women, but in a way where you're more inclined to not be repelled by repetitive tasks. Now, on the other hand, um, and this is, let me take you out of the household. Honest to God, all right? Don't think, just answer. Most secretaries in the world are male or female? Female. 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 And now, of all the secretaries in the world, most, the best secretaries in the world are male or female? Female. female. Administrative tasks? Females. Repetitive? Very. Uh -huh. Very. See? Now, this is a problem most men have. Fair, repetitive and multitask. Yes, we'll get into that in a second. I, I love that you brought that up. Thank you. Because see, now we're going to balance it. Thank you so much. Before we go there, now ask most men in the world, why don't you have a male secretary? Apart from ego things and whatever, and <laughs> occasionally you have a guy who doesn't have the ego problem and will be your secretary, they're just not good at it. Yeah. They're just not reliable at that particular thing. That's why most secretaries, to male or female, are female. It's just the way it is. It's part of what we know how to do. Females can do this, males can do this. But beautifully pointed out by Melinda, on the other hand, to balance it. Because it's about a balance. Remember, we're not saying you're better than men. We're not saying men are better than you. We're saying we're exactly the same in a mutually superior way. It's the justice of Allah. Now look at it, multitask. You know that book? There's a famous book, Why Men Can Only Do One Thing at a Time. And I'm going to wrap this up, this segment up, and come back after the break with a very funny example. The director just spoke in my ear, and I was doing only one thing at a time, so I kind of lost it here. I'm sure a woman would have had no problem with it. We'll look at that in a minute, but the name of the book is Why uh, Men Can Only Do One Thing at a Time and Women Can't Stop Talking. Hey, I didn't write that book, but we'll see you in a bit, inshallah, and talk about that.